Hi everyone, uh, just another video for you here just to showcase some of the software features that I like on the Huawei Mate X3 which I've got in front of me here. Um, I've had a few requests since my last video which compared the Google Pixel Fold to this phone. Um, basically I was explaining how I prefer this phone and it's actually my daily use phone at the minute. How, some of the things that I like about it compared to the Pixel. Uh, which one of the things was I showcased Instagram. So on the Pixel, it sort of has black bars either side. And there's no way of changing that. You just can't get it to fill the screen no matter what. So on this, I actually have it set to fill the screen like so. Which obviously has its pros and cons. It looks nice, but it does obviously block. You can't see the whole of a post on one thing. It sort of stretches it out like that. But there is a solution. So if you just go into the settings here... So I'll show you, you click on display and brightness, which is on. Then you scroll down and you'll see that there's an option there called app scaling. So if you click on that and you have a choice for interior or exterior screen. But the great thing about this phone is for every single app you've got installed, you can, so if I go to Instagram to show you, you can literally click on it and you can choose full screen, which is set to default. Or you can actually do four by three or 16 by nine. I don't know if you can see that there. Just wait for my camera to focus. There we go. Uh, so if I just give an example, if I click 4x3 for Instagram, and then I go back, I'll get rid of that, and go back into Instagram, which is there, you'll see now it sort of gives you little small black bars around the outside, and it does look better. You know, you can see a bit more, but it's still not perfect. You know, it does cut off some of the posts still. So in this case, if you just go back into my settings... Again, display and brightness, go to app screen. And if I choose Instagram again, scroll down. And then if I choose 16 by 9, you'll now see when I open Instagram that it basically opens up like that, like it would on a normal phone. So you've got the black, you have got the black bars either side. And I don't think double tapping, no, double tapping doesn't do anything. But, you know, you might prefer this. But the thing I like is that you get the option on this phone, which you don't get with the Pixel phone. You just have, that's the default option. That's it. And it's the same with a lot of apps. Like Snapchat was awful on the Pixel. You know, it was like this. And it made photos look weird. And it put the right and weird. And it was janky. Whereas again on this, you know, you can just make that choice, which I like. And it, you can do it for every single app as well. Um, another thing I really like on this phone, obviously, is, you know, compared a lot of rumours say that, you know, these, that Samsung is the only phone, foldable phone, that you can use a stylus on, but I'm actually going to demonstrate here. I did purchase this from China and it arrived yesterday. So it's the Huawei M-Pen 2S. So this cost, I think it's about £30, I think, if that. Um, so basically, as I'm going to demonstrate now to you, there's, this is basically like a full-size pen. There's a little button on it there. And you probably can't see the button, but there is a little button just there. And basically what this allows to do, so... As you'll see now, it's on my Bluetooth settings. It's not actually, oh, there it goes connected now, yeah. So it just connects up automatically when you go near it. But the first time to connect it, I just literally just, there's a little USB there. It's USB C, you just plug it into the bottom of the phone and it just connects up automatically. So this, it basically works like Samsung S Pen. So it works just like this. So you can just use it as like a dumb pen just to scroll around. Or you can use the button and you can, so for example, if I hold the button down and then just draw a circle like that, it gives you a screenshot of what you've just done. You can save it, you can doodle on it, you can whatever you want to do with it, save it, forget rid of that. Or you can double tap with the, with the button down and take a screenshot. Uh, then if the screen is actually off or on, just on your lock screen like so, and you just tap with the button like that, it opens the notepad. And then you can just write, you know, and, and this feels very, very good. And again, it's got pressure sensitive. So, you know, you can do light, light things and then or darker lines and stuff. So it's all, it's very similar to Samsung's pen, but it's a full size pen. And this actually does work as well on both screens. So again, if I go fold it up, it works just exactly the same in there. You know, hold the button down, do a circle of that. And you've got your screenshot like that, you know. So it's nice to use. I'm not a big stylish user, but it is nice to have, you know, if you want to open the screen up, you know, you can do them doodles, you can do things on it, you know. It's just nice to be able to do that. And even if you just want to use it to scroll like that. And it charges up from the, so if I just give you a demonstration, it just charges up. You just pull the lid off like that. 
plug it into the bottom of the phone, like so. And then there's a little light on it, just there. And then if you can see that, and that'll light green when it's fully charged, and it takes about five minutes to charge of that. And then you get a, quite a long time to run. But I've only had the pen since yesterday, so I'm quite new to it myself. I don't think it's quite as fully functional as Samsung's pen because I don't think you can use it to take photos with using the button. But, you know, it's just nice to have because I see a lot of talk online about, you know, the Samsung is the only foldable phone that supports a stylus, you know, but it actually doesn't. I mean, it doesn't, granted, it doesn't come in the box with the, with the Hawaiian. You do have to buy it from China, but it only took about a week to come. And it does work fully well with the Huawei Mate X3. Um, like I said, I'm still using this phone as my daily driver. So if there's any questions that you want, you know, anything you want me to test, you know, because obviously it doesn't have Google services on it, but there is workarounds. I'm sure you know about the workarounds, but if you want me to sort of talk you through anything uh, about the phone, you know, test anything for you, just drop me a comment and I'll be happy to help. Also subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty more videos to come, a lot more content to talk about. And, you know, if there's anything I can do to improve the videos, if, you know, you want me to change anything up, then just, again, drop me a comment and let me know. Thanks.